the last two months of my life have been an anxiety ridden roller coaster. Where do I start? I had actually sat right here, maybe two months ago at this point, when I made this decision. I recorded it, uploaded it to my computer, didn't send it out, and then I spilt on my laptop, so that video was gone. Became outdated, so I'm glad I did not publish it. About two months ago, I made the decision that I'm ready to scale BDGE for real this time, the proper way, like really, really scale it. Since I started this thing, I don't remember when I started. on YouTube, good morning. It's uh, March 22nd. Yesterday was my last day at my full-time job. Basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna be kind of going out on my own. I don't wanna say I'm gonna be starting my own business yet because I feel like that's a little OD right now because I don't actually have anything big set up, uh, but I'm gonna be freelancing for a while. You know, I have a lot of goals and kind of ambitions that I wanna go after right now. And to me, like I, I value the time and the freedom and my creativity a lot more than I value money. For the last couple of years, I've been I've been in the marketing industry doing mostly paid social media. So a lot of paid Facebook advertising and I've been running them and I realized, you know, I can do this on my own, go out and talk to the local businesses and the small businesses in my area and, you know, run campaigns for them. That'll be my, my revenue source for now. The plan is to onboard a few clients and I want to run free trials with them. Let me run this campaign for you for 30 days are absolutely free and if I do a good job you know they'll continue to do business with me and I think that's a good place to start I don't want to like rush into anything I don't want to get crazy but I, I kind of want to you know experience the whole building a business thing along the, along the way and show you guys step by step things that I did right things I did wrong where I failed just like I don't know I just want to put everything out there and get everything recorded and hopefully it could help someone or maybe inspire or motivate anyone out there that's, that's kind of looking to do the same thing I think people have the wrong idea when they when they say like oh I'm gonna start my own business I don't think you need to to, you don't have to build the next Google or the next Amazon or the next Spotify. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like everyone thinks that when you do that, you automatically have to be the next Mark Zuckerberg or you like failed. You got to have realistic goals. Like, what do you actually want? Like for me, I, like I said, I value my time, my freedom, my creativity. So what I really want is to be able to work for myself, to be able to work from home or work from wherever I want. And I want to have the creativity to still be able to do the YouTube channel, still be able to, you know, work out all the time whenever I want to. Obviously I have to still make money, but money's not as valuable to me as those other things. So if I can build up to the point where I'm making the same salary as I was prior to this, that's that's fine. I don't need to be making half a million dollars a year or anything like that, so. Probably about seven years ago, we've super, super, super slowly made incremental improvements. We haven't scaled, okay? Like the subscribers have gone up, the people that follow us have gone up, made more money, Etc. I haven't made a conscious effort to maximize what we're doing here and make as big of an impact as I think we can. And, you know, I don't judge myself for not pushing a little bit harder because that's just what I wanted at the time. So how can you blame yourself or how can you be upset with yourself for mapping your actions to what you wanted to do at the time? I'm at a point where I'm ready to invest everything I have back into BDGE. And by that, I mean, you know, if, if you've watched any of the videos over the last couple of days, then you probably already heard about this, but we are getting a real office here in New York. Sorry, I need, I forget what class I took in college, but I remember they're like, when you film things, don't put the subject of the film directly in the middle. It's like the rule of fifths, I think, and you wanna be in like the third or the, I don't fucking know, whatever. I think it looks better from over here. Regardless, we are getting a legitimate office space out in Manhattan in New York City where I currently live and where I'm from. And we will be making ideally four full-time hires. All of this should ideally be finalized in the new year. I'm hoping end of February, early to mid-March at the latest. So by like March 1st, hopefully we're in an office. We have four or five people working in there and we are churning out around the clock. This is gonna be extremely, extremely expensive financially, of course. Uh, luckily, I've saved up a decent chunk of money from the money that we've made as a company over the last couple of years. A lot of the money we've made, you know, I've, I've obviously invested some back into the business, giving some to the contractors that we've worked with, whether they were creators or video editors or whatever the case may be, web designers. And I've worked out of my apartment, my studio for a long time. And that was my idea of investing back into the business. But what I've done for the last couple of years is I've invested back 
more into like my personal life and my, I want to say happiness, but I want to, I want to word that as like search for happiness, I guess you could say, because listen, I'm, I'm super grateful for like the life I have, of course, and like the friends I have around me and the fact that I get to even be in this position to like make videos like this. But I, I think life is always a continuous search for happiness and trying to find what, what energizes you and what makes you happy. And over the last couple of years, I've invested back into myself. I've moved into like the area that I love most in the world. I have tried to surround myself with people that energize me and people that I really love and, and all that kind of stuff. And what I've realized is that that's not going to fulfill me, right? It does in a sense, but this, what I've created, BDGE and this brand and this, and this life for myself is really what fuels me and making an impact on people is what fuels me. And I realize I can only scale that so much myself. So investing back into myself is actually investing back into my business. And that's something I couldn't have learned without having invested into myself to begin with and, and doing things the wrong way to begin with. So I don't regret anything over the last couple of years about not making any full-time hires or not having a real office space or you know spending a lot of money on an apartment that I enjoyed because I needed to know that that wasn't what pulled the trigger for me, right? The only way you learn about things is by fucking things up in the long run. So I got to the point where I'm like, yes, like the thing that's really going to energize me continuously is building this. So that's how the decision came. I don't know why it hit me right like two months ago. I don't know why that's, it's hard for me to explain, to be honest with you. It just feels right. It just feels like this is what I need to do right now in order for me to take the next step personally and for this business to take the next step personally. So we'll be hiring, let's break it down. Obviously myself full time, because now you know we're gonna have to turn into a corporation. I'm gonna have to employ myself as a employee, as a salaried person, which is a little bit scary for me to be honest with you because again, like most of the money we've made not to sound like a fucking asshole, but like I haven't had to worry about money in a long time, two, three years now. And that's been really fucking nice, obviously. But I think it's time for me to like focus back in on things that are important. Start living like a real fucking human again. And like, I think that's, I, I need, I need, you know, I, I don't want to say I've gotten complacent over the last couple of years, but like I have a little bit. I need to push myself out of my comfort zone again in order for, for me and us to hit like the ceiling that I think we can hit. So myself, obviously, we will be hiring Animal, we will be hiring Fake Intern Tony, and we will be hiring Ike, the editor. There are a lot of names that I have left out of that group, of course. There is Scott, there are, there's Snacks, there's Noah, you know, there's Mike, there's all these guys that have done great work for me and have put a lot of time and effort into the brand to help build it. And I'm not gonna go into each individual person about why they're being hired, why they're not being hired, or like, you know, get into those details. I've spoken to every single person individually about the process before I posted this video. So everyone knows where they stand, why they stand where they stand, and the direction. Nobody is being hired as a full-time content creator. So you might be asking like, why are you hiring Animal, not Snacks? I'm hiring Animal because he's a fucking dumbass genius, okay? Creatively, he's the person that's going to unlock us to make content that reaches a broader audience, whether it's for merch, whether it's for our products, whether it's just for fun, whether it's for sponsorships, when we're together and he's planning those things, the content's gonna be fantastic. I have no doubt about it. This is way bigger than just my individual fantasy content, the way I'm thinking. Ike is fantastic behind the video camera, right? He's the one who does a lot of the uh, draft, the E-Town Get Down draft day vlogs. He's the one that edits Fade the Public. He's the one that edits Bagels and Locks. Like, he has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of talent behind the camera, video editing, as well as being able to capture the story and also be the dude who does post-production on it. And he's also genuinely like very, very creative and, and, and comedic when he is doing his editing. Tony's like my right-hand man, to be honest with you. All the bullshit I don't want to do, he's going to have to do. The way I'm looking at our business model right now is Animal thinks of the idea, Ike captures the idea, Tony distributes the idea. And the last piece of the puzzle is we need a web developer. We need a full stack web developer. And I put this video out on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn uh, a few days ago, trying to search for one. Not easy to find. I have a lot of people in my audience. I would love to scoop one out of the audience, right? That would be fucking ideal. Someone who knows the brand, someone who 
understands our energy and our, our, our vision and someone who just like knows us personally and, and would be able to work with us that way. It's a little tougher than I imagined. Most of you guys, a lot of the audiences of the younger brand, right? Your brand is Gen Z, lower part of the millennial age group. Not a lot of experience. I want someone who is well versed in full stack development because we have a lot of visions when it comes to monetization, right? All those other things that the, the Tony, the animal, the Ike, those are all long-term branding things, right? I don't expect a lot of those to turn, those are top of the funnel, right? Getting more people into the BDGE atmosphere, getting people to recognize the brand a little bit more. We still need to monetize as a brand, of course, because again, five full-time fucking hires, office space in New York is not cheap. We have runway for one year, maybe two years tops right now. I'm talking about like cash on hand with the partnerships we have for this upcoming year. So we're gonna be okay, but we obviously need to monetize correctly. One of those ways I see us monetizing is through the development of tools that will help you guys as fantasy players. I don't wanna go into details on the tools, but they are above my pay grade in order to create them. The web development search or the full stack web developer search is difficult for me for a multitude of reasons. One, it's just hard to find someone that's super talented, right? In that job space right now, just to begin with, okay? Two, this is like the first aspect of my business that I don't actually know anything about, right? I'm not like awesome at video editing. I'm not even awesome at content creation. I'm not great at most things, but I'm, I'm dangerous enough at almost every, every part of my business, whether it's graphic design, video editing, Photoshop, making content, research, social media, like all those things I'm good at and I've learned at over the year, like accounting, finance, making contracts, you know, talking to sponsors. These are things I've learned over the process of creating a business. One thing I don't know how to fucking do is code. I don't know how to code, how to make a website. You know, I've made websites actually. Most of the draft guide websites that we've had over the last few years, I created. But when it comes to this level of knowledge on what I see us creating from a tool standpoint, way out of my pay grade. I don't know how to make apps, I don't know how to make mobile apps, I don't know how to do a lot of the shit that we need someone to do for this. This is the first time that we're gonna have something within my business that I don't know anything about. So that's really scary for me because then I don't know what I'm even really looking for in the person that I wanna hire. I'm someone who plays off energy, really. Uh, I, most of my life has been like, you know, who I wanna surround myself with, the people I wanna work with, the things that attract me are energy based and I'm like, okay, this is good energy, this is bad energy, go this way, go away from that. And that has pretty much, you know, directed me the right way for, for most of my decisions, both personally and business-wise. I don't wanna say it's easy to give off really good energy. A lot of, okay, so a lot of the emails I get from people interested in the job are dudes that, you know, didn't do like computer science in college, but took like a boot camp course, you know, last year or something, and this would be like their first real job. And like, believe me, I'm fucking super grateful that we even have people like that that want to get in on the opportunity, but that it's just not what we're looking for right now. I need someone who can come in and kick fucking ass immediately. I want someone who is so into the fucking brand that's so bought into the vision that when I say I want someone that's not working remotely, that wants to come in and work in New York with us in the office and be in that sort of creative environment, that jumps at the fucking opportunity. I want someone that, that like I would see in myself if I was 22, if I was a full stack developer when I was younger and this opportunity came in, I'm like, dude, I'm on the next plane to New York. What the fuck do you need? That's the kind of shit I'm looking for from somebody that wants this position. I'm going within my network and I'm realizing that it's tough to find someone that does the job well, that has the experience, that also is willing to, you know, that either lives over here in this area or is willing to relocate to New York for the position. And I know I only put the job, you know, starting to get awareness for the job out like fucking, three days ago, four days ago. So there's obviously still a lot more search to, to happen. But a lot of the times the people that are super passionate about it are the ones that reach out like immediately like, yo, yo, yo let's do it. And we've had people that, that do. I just think maybe I'm looking for a fucking unicorn. Maybe I'm looking for someone that doesn't actually exist and is like asking way too much. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. This is the first time I've actually gone out and you know, every other job that we've had, every uh, every other person that has infiltrated BDG as a team member has come super fucking naturally. I don't go out of my way, like Snacks and Animal, friends growing up. Noah's been blogging for us, started blogging for us like five fucking years ago. 
Mike was a friend that was in the BDG community already, like commenting on all of our shit, started making content and came to the, the first two BDGE NYC draft weekends that we had uh, where we'd rent out the Airbnbs and shit. So I, you know, we connected as friends first. And then I was like, yo, do you want to make videos with us? And now he is what he is. Scott reached out to me saying like, I want to be part of it. Ike is someone that graduated with Animal in high school. We all went to the same high school. So I knew him already. Tony came here from fucking California, dropped his shit and said, hey, I want to work with you. It's done, you know, barely paid that motherfucker over the last year and has worked his dick off. Anything I needed there. All natural shit. This is the first time I'm going out of my way to find someone that I need for a job, which also makes me uncomfortable because I'm like, am I doing this right? Should it have came naturally? We need this person. Wait, do I find someone who's going to do it remotely? Do I just contract someone out? But I, 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 it, that doesn't feel right for me, man. And I always go off my feelings. It's like, there are a lot of issues that I have right now with the web development thing, right? Me personally, because I'm handling all that shit pretty much by myself. Anytime issues come up, anytime people are like, yo, I paid for access to this, but it keeps sending me to a page where it's like, you need to purchase re-access to it. It's like, I don't know how to fix that, but I need someone to. And I want someone who's invested in the brand. I want someone who can like be the person that deals with all those fucking problems as well as innovates and, and helps us take our product to the next level and has their own thoughts and ideas. And I need me just in coder form. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that's possible to find. So if you're out there, please fucking reach out. This was not a sales pitch on that. I'm just kind of, you know, relaying how I'm feeling right now. Info at bigdogsfantasy.com. I'll put that down below. Or if you think someone that you know would be good for the job, please also reach out. Agencies need not to waste my time. I'm not looking to hire an agency. So please, please, please don't. Um, reach out if you work for an agency. This is the most energized I've felt from a business perspective in a long time. I'm really fucking nervous though too. I'm really nervous because this is the most drastic move I've ever made in my life for sure. It's the biggest financial move I've ever made. I'm not, I'm not necessarily like nervous about it not working, but it, it, it's not about working. It's not about it working. We need to like, hit a level of performance that goes above and beyond working, right? Like we need to hit a level that I think we can hit, but we need to hit it. We don't have a lot of room for fucking error given what we're investing back into this. So going back to the money thing, like I've had a lot of money just kind of like sitting in my bank account. And again, that's not bragging, that's probably me being a fucking idiot. I should have started investing back into it on a heavier scale much longer ago. I'm not gonna have that anymore. Everything I have personally, I'm talking about all the money in my savings account. I'm talking about all the money I have in the stock market. I'm talking about all the money that I have in NFTs right now. All of that is gonna go right back into the business because that's what makes me happy, first of all. So I have no, I have no problem doing it. But if in two years we don't improve drastically as a company together, I probably personally won't be broke, but like, it's gonna be a failure, you know? Like, I'm gonna have to scale back down and like tell these people that I just hired full time, like, sorry, like, we're not good enough. Like, you're not good enough, I'm not good enough. I have to go back to what I was doing before, be an individual content creator. I don't know, dude. It's scary, it's very fucking scary. I have a lot of belief that it'll work, but that doesn't mean, like, there's not a black and white side to both of these things. What I will say, as I always do, when I'm making a big decision, I look at it the same fucking way every time. I'm someone who's super, 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 I can't think of the right word right now. Um, like impulsive, very impulsive. For the most part, it has not backfired on me. I'm impulsive when it comes to my emotions. And usually when I follow my emotions, it's leading me into the right direction, except with women. But for business, it served me relatively well up to this point. Once I have something in my heart, uh, it's like a done deal. When I made up my mind two months ago, to do this, I was gonna take on investment money. And that entire video I made two months ago that got lost was about taking on investment money. The last, the, the first month of that process was doing nothing but learning, researching, listening to podcasts, writing, uh, reading articles, anything, any information I can get my hand on about the uh, fundraising process, I consumed. Again, it's probably a big reason why the content for fantasy football has gone down, pulled back a little bit this year is because I've been, my mind has been completely wrapped around that. And I got on phone calls with every, every possible resource I had in the industry or anyone I knew that had successfully fundraised, I got on phone calls with to learn about the process. I'm talking about like CEOs of Sleeper, FanDuel, 
underdog. Like I really pulled every fucking network string I possibly had available to me to learn more about this process. And at the end of the day, I figured it was best for us not to take on investment money and lose part of the company, bootstrap for as long as we possibly could. And it was tough for me to make that decision personally because that wipes out my personal safety, right? Good for the business and good for me long term, of course. But that means right now, instead of taking other people's money and having really, really solid like peace of mind for the next two years, everything of mine that I own personally is going back into it and I'm really gonna have nothing left of my own personal money when this is said and done, um, which is what makes it scary. But the fundraising process, which I learned a lot about, I'm really glad I did all the research and things like that, was insane. It is insane and I'm so glad I don't have to go through that because that's a whole nother like, thing that fucks me up in, in my head. But yeah, it, it's taken away from my content in season for sure. And we are gonna be scaling BDGE in every aspect of it. The way I look at what we're investing into is three things, content on two different sides and then the web development stuff. Content in terms of volume, of content that we can create and the quality of content we can create as well as post-production. So post-production in terms of distribution, scaling the volume of content and distributing it around to every platform we could possibly do it. And then the web development is basically the way we monetize. Content we're gonna be bringing on, I've been the face of BDGE as it relates to season long fantasy football content creation, right? It's basically you guys taking my word for everything. We're gonna be bringing on new creators to help in the season long realm of things. We're gonna be bringing on new creators to help on the dynasty side of things. So you will see a lot of new faces coming to BDGE over the next three, six, nine, 12 months. We're expanding the brand in terms of content and content creators. We're expanding everything. We are also going to change the YouTube name from Nick Ercolano to BDGE. Or BDG Media, or BDG Fantasy Sport, or whatever the fucking case may be, this will be more of a collective thing. All of our content will start to be put onto the main channel. Everything from Mike's Market Watch Monday, to my in-season waiver wire recaps, to Animal's House, everything will be on the main channel because we are no longer Nick Ercolano. We are an actual media brand. We are an actual media company, and up to this point, as much as I said I wanted us to be that, we weren't. We were me. We were going as far as I could take us and I'm realizing that we can't, I can't scale and I can't make the impact I wanna make if I just keep relying on myself. I need other people around me and I've always had good people around me that have helped out, but when I'm the only person that's been putting my full-time energy into this for five years. And if we can have four, five people doing that at all times, the sky's the fucking limit for us. Uh, and that's the way I'm looking at it. And at the end of the day, like, I want this impact to be, our brand is just the story of us, man. And I want us to be one of the best stories ever fucking told. I really, really do. And I think we can get there. Our brand, again, is about inspiring people to be themselves and realize that you can be successful by being exactly who you are. And I've tried to document that and show you guys the entire journey of who I am as a person and how I've built this. And this is just another step in the journey. So that's the impact I wanna make. I want to do that at scale. I want to inspire people at scale to do what they love by being exactly who they fucking are, man. And that's what BDG really is about at the end of the day. I have major, major, major fucking plans for us over the next year, two years. It's going to be a wild fucking ride. It's so funny, while every company has worked, I've always worked in reverse, I feel like, of the normal work field, in the normal like employment industry. I hated working in an office for a long time. I wanted to be independent. So I left my job and I worked from home for a long time. Ever since I did that, I've been, this, what I'm doing right now is the culmination of everything I've wanted over the last five years. I wanted an office. I wanted to work back in an office so badly, but not their office. My fucking office with my people doing this. And we're finally there. And I could take a fucking breath it's hard to step back, man, and just say you're proud of yourself because you're in it every day. But like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe, maybe I have come so far, but it feels like I haven't even fucking started. But I could say everything I've accomplished, I've done it my way. And that, that's really what BDG is about at the end of the day, man. You know, the workforce has been moving towards now a remote workforce. And I'm like, no, we need to go the opposite direction. We're missing out on so much energy and realness and, and, 
and camaraderie and, and, and you need that. You fucking need that. I really truly believe in the heart of my fucking heart that this is what's gonna bring us to the next level. So coming early 2022, the real BDGE headquarters, all this other shit has been beta. All this other shit has been V.1, V.2, we're getting the real V1.0, the real headquarters, no more beta version. This is a call out to all content creators. We will be open to y'all. We want you to come through. We want you to come podcast at our studio, come paint at our studio, come record videos at our studio, bro. This is an open call to fucking anybody who is inspired. This is an open call to anyone who wants to create to make an impact on the world. This is an open call to fucking anyone, man. At the end of the day, that's what I want. I want to create an open space, an open environment, and this is where it really starts. So I love y'all so fucking much. Every piece of support you've ever given us. Yeah, this is this is just what feels right. And I can't, I realize I didn't even talk about it when I started talking about it originally, but every time I make a tough decision, I look at whether or not I would regret it when I'm older. When I'm 40, will I look back and say like, Nick, you would have rather continued to be an individual content creator at 29. You would have rather continue to build your personal brand or would you have rather gone all in on the business and see where you guys could have gone with it? The choice, when you look at it that way, there's no choice. I would have regret not, I can, my bank account might say zero dollars in two years. I won't regret a single choice I'm making right now. I won't regret it because I can't live with regret, bro. Like you can't fucking live with regret. When your heart and your brain are in sync on something, there's no choice to be made. They've already made the choice for you. When I'm older, I will not regret having made this decision, man. And I hope y'all didn't regret watching this. So if you stuck around this long, man, I guess, I don't know, do whatever people do when they watch YouTube videos, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first part of the vlog or if I decide to put that part after this, which I think I'll probably end up doing. I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the vlog. Thank you guys, man. 2022, I promise you, we're gonna, we're gonna bring a version of BDGE that, that's the version I've always imagined us being able to bring. I promise, I promise. I love y'all. I don't know what I'm gonna weigh right now, but I feel like it's gonna be an embarrassingly low number. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. I don't know how to set you up in here. So that said 152.8 pounds. I've legitimately lost like, uh, I've actually lost like 13 pounds of muscle since COVID started. Cause I don't work out that often anymore. I don't feel like I look like a, f maybe I look kind of frail, but like, I don't know. I feel like I have a normal, Skinny but athletic, muscular looking body. Am I too skinny? Do I have body dysmorphia? Serious fucking question. I don't give a fuck to be honest with you. I, like, I kind of like how I look right now, but maybe I'm not seeing what I actually look like. But 150, here's what I'll say, two things. I was out last night drinking and I didn't, I barely ate yesterday. You know, whenever you're out drinking, you wake up super dehydrated. What's the point of this camera if I'm not gonna use a flip vlog part? See that I look like an idiot. When you go out drinking, don't eat a lot, right? You're not like sucking in all that salt, obviously. So your body drains itself of any of the water fluid that it was holding on to. Plus, when you're drinking, you obviously get super dehydrated. So when you wake up the next day, you're gonna be really, really light in terms of weight. Like I think I weighed myself a few days ago and I was like 157, 158, which is still like way lighter than I've been in a really long time. A little bit concerning. I have been getting back into the gym a little bit though. I'm still, f <sighs> this was not fishing for compliments. I'm actually kind of concerned. I just need someone to tell me like, Nick, Everyone else can see it, but you look like an idiot. Yeah, so I was out last night. What did we do? Um, I don't really get too much into my like personal dating life on here. I was out on a date last night. It was the first date. It went good. It's very cute. Very cute. Some of y'all are going to be disappointed. Bee stings. Um, I haven't really ever talked about bee stings. She was on the channel a couple times, but we had a, I would call it a situation ship. Came to an end last week though. We won't get into a whole ordeal about it. Last night we went to this place called Pretty, Pretty Ricky's. 
in the Lower East Side. Very good marg. Eight one, I think I rated it. I rate every single margarita I drink in New York City. So if you happen to be coming to New York City, I get a lot of random DMs from people who are like, I'm visiting New York City. I need to know where to go for margaritas. On my Instagram, you go to the highlight part, I've literally taken a picture and rated on a scale of one to 10 every margarita I've had in New York City. I actually maxed out the highlight part of Instagram like they made me make a second story because once you hit like 100 or 150 of them, they make you do a new one. The other thing is too, Notably, if you follow me, you probably know this, but I don't have uh, good sleeping tendencies, good sleeping. I have great sleeping habits, so I'm just not good at sleeping at all. Like, I barely sleep. And it's not because I'm like, up fucking grinding. Like, I try to sleep like a normal fucking human. I just can't. And I'm going through a phase right now where it's really, really bad. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I probably look like a fucking ghost on here. The last week or so has been so bad. I think I've probably gotten a collective like three to four hours of sleep a night. I don't know if any of it was deep sleep. And it's like fucking with my body. And I have been eating a lot lately like when I wake up and I'm in that state like I, f I don't know my body just feels like it doesn't want anything it's really really odd so the combination of not sleeping and not eating not put me in a great place mentally I actually feel better today than I have most of the days waking up for whatever reason but maybe that's just like a mental thing you know you come off like if you have a good day the day before like you know like the date went well last night so I come off and you have a little bit of a high from it you're like oh life's kind of good right now xyz maybe I'm in that zone I don't know dude I switched to an electric toothbrush three four months ago and I don't know why I was so anti electric toothbrush for so long in my life but this thing's fucking incredible oral B brawn I feel like the first couple times I tried them I hated them I don't know why maybe it was just a shitty one that I got my hands on but ever since I've been using this thing I absolutely goaded this is a fucking bullshit lighting for me to have done that because it's yellow lighting in here so it's gonna be like fuck you guys so stupid. I do this shit all the time. I put a uh, face wash on my hands and I forget to put water on my face beforehand. So then I'm just like backhand rubbing water. And now if I put water on the back of my hands, it's gonna wash off the face wash, which means I'm using two for one. In this economy, you can't be, on this economy, you can't be forgetting to put water on your face. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a little arm action here. Ow, fuck the time. I usually rub it in for 45 seconds, get in all the crevices and whatnot in your nose, you know, around your eyes. So this is a very sensitive area, so like don't be crazy rubbing that shit in or you're gonna blop, pop some blood vessels forehead, inside your beard, and your neck or whatever. I'll let it sit there for probably like 10, 15 seconds afterwards. I'm gonna go in my fucking scuba diving. I hate the fucking commercials where people have faith, they do face wash and then they just like, Splash it on their face like that. It's like dog. You're just gonna look like you got toothpaste still left everywhere Like all the face wash is still in your eyeballs. It's fucking so stupid like It doesn't fucking work. That's kind of like my typical morning routine ish not routine, but like Cleansing routine and as I said in my last vlog typically I'll go outside And I'll walk look how fucking absurd our bathroom is it's got like these double sinks and this bathtub Which I've yet to use which I don't even think would work because it's got no drain and then we have this open area which leads to a fire escape. When we first moved in, we didn't have a shower thing here. So straight up, my cheeks were visible to the public. They were public cheeks. It felt pretty good though. It was like the summertime and like no one gave a fuck. Okay. It was summertime and I didn't give a fuck. I hate using moisturizer in the summer because it makes me feel oily and I'm already like sweaty. So I don't need like sweat on top of oil, on top of water. So I don't usually use it in the summer, but I have some stuff from Geology. Uh, I actually used to work with them. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I had a couple sponsored reads in some of my videos. They have good moisturizer for the morning. I also have just a super basic one from Trader Joe's. Yeah, this one is like moisturizer, but it comes with sunscreen. Apparently like every video you watch, like it, you have to get some sunscreen sunscreen super fucking important i'm like okay whatever but it's also like i don't know if i need something that the problem is this it's like i feel like you only need sunscreen in the summer when the uv index is like an eight but i'm not wearing moisturizer in the fucking summer in the winter the uv index is like a negative fucking four i turn into a candle so it's like do i actually need sunscreen i think you still do i don't know any of you people that are into skin let a pasty brother know so we're gonna put just a little bit i think i'm applying this wrong too but i'm just gonna
now we'll go outside. I'll probably walk for 30 minutes or so, depending on how, I don't know what the temperature is actually. It might be like negative seven. If that's the case, we getting back into bed and not sleeping. I'll get a coffee in about 30 minutes and then have that really important call that I mentioned on last vlog at 11 today. Whew. Also, just a side note, I think it's cool. Two things, actually, like three more things. It's gonna be a long ass vlog. One for reference on my butt. See, this is the thing, like, I feel like I, I look like muscular, like I shouldn't be 150 pounds. The way I look does not equate to, whatever, fuck you guys. For reference, I'm 5'10", if that helps at all. So after you have a date, after you have a good date, at least, you should, the next, I mean, you could follow up right after. I think following up immediately after the date works uh, with something funny, or just like letting them know you had a good time, you'd like to hang out again. I think the next day is also fine um, with something a little more, like, a little more outgoing or creative. Like, for instance, last night we were talking about she lived in my area for a little while. We were talking about some of the uh, like food spots in the area and she like loved bagels, right? And I was like, I'm super indifferent towards bagels. They're like not my favorite breakfast food. If I'm gonna get a bacon, egg and cheese, I want it on a roll and I just don't eat like bagels with cream cheese on them. And she's like, you have to go to this place. I think it's called like Brooklyn Bagel or whatever. And it became like a thing where like we were like kind of bickering back and forth, like jokingly bickering back and forth about the bagels all night. And now I'm thinking about going over there for breakfast and like taking a picture of me at the bagel store. And then the next picture I'll follow up with me eating like a bacon, egg and cheese on a roll or me getting a bagel and then being like this is where the bagel belongs and like the next picture will show me like putting it into a trash or something like that that's just my kind of sense of humor maybe that's like why I don't have a girlfriend <laughs> but I think it's kind of funny but I think you should I think you should follow up with cute shit like that something that's like creative but also like personal to how whatever you guys were talking about or whatever you did the night before just like show that you're outgoing funny listen to what they were talking about and that you're still like thinking about it, you know? the night before Thanksgiving. On my block in New York are two of the best pizzerias probably in New York, which in turn probably means on the East Coast, in the country, in the world, on planet Earth, in the Milky Way, galaxy, Western hemisphere. But it's too cold to get to the, so there's, there's like four on my block that are within like walking distance. Two that are closest to me that I can get to when it's, you know, 30 degree weather as it is in New York, both kind of stink. What I'm eating right now, whatever. The two other ones are fucking John's of Bleecker and Bleecker Street Pizza, but you can guess what block I live on, are fucking primo. And Joe's Pizza is on the way. It's technically not on Bleecker, but it's literally right off Bleecker. So three of the goat ones are just like too far during this cold ass weather. So I settled for this, however, we were one of 3,000 people to score one of these Reese's nine inch cut pies. This is literally just a giant Reese's. There's never been something that's made me hornier in my life. Shout out to all of my ex-girlfriends. Darren Ravel tweeted about it for saying that Reese's is dropping that. It's only 3,000 of them made. Like here's the link. I went on and copped one at like 45 bucks, which I know just sounds ridiculous, but I'm not gonna like not buy that. They sold out within an hour. People were flipping them on eBay and StockX for like $500. But I already told my mom, I was like, you know, tell all the, tell all the aunts and uncles, I got fucking dessert covered at Thanksgiving. Show her the Reese's pie. This was prior to me knowing that they were flipping on eBay for that much money, but I'm a good guy. I stick to my word. I have morals, especially when it revolves around me eating Reese's. So I held strong. I didn't sell it, I didn't eat it, but I'm so fucking excited to open it tomorrow. And honestly, the most ridiculous part about everything is not that they sold out in an hour, not that I paid $50 for it, not that they sold for $500 on eBay afterwards, most ridiculous part of it, without a doubt, have to be the nutrition facts. There are 48, like a normal ass pie would be cut into like eight slices. There's 48 servings in this. It's for people with 44 children, 
two girlfriends and a wife on the side. That's like 170 grams of protein, which is like a normal day for me probably, but like eight bajillion grams of fat. It's 8,000 calories in this. I, I genuinely think I could eat that in one sitting. Yes. Yeah, everyone's been saying yes and figure out what it is and it's up with for oh, you'll, you'll manage to find some way to spice. Put some gravy on it, Steve. Put some gravy on it. I want apple pie. Dad, try the Reese's thing. I want one want of these doohickeys. No, you gotta eat a lot of fruit. Dad, try the Reese's thing. It's good for the stool gun. Steve, try the, try try the, peanut, try butter the peanut butter pie. Peanut butter. Yeah. We need no, your you gotta pick what? up your the rest of the week. We need your live reaction. Yeah. No, wait, you got the peanut butter in it, Dad. Oh, shit, it fell apart. Dad, did you have to say that word? You couldn't have said, oh, gee. <laughs> Go. Dad, tell me the face. That's not him either. Grandma, <laughs> 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 move. Put panacetic on that. Yeah, yeah, it's on it. Is it good, Dad? Oh. No. What's Dad, the word? Is it good? No. Oh, my God, let's go gum. <laughs> Neosporin. And the Panda band-aid. I like Panasonic. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the peanut butter good? Well, peanut butter is good. Butter. Oh my god. Is See, it? he goes into a blackout when he's eating the thing. <laughs> 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 it's like eyes roll in the back of his head. I'll give you Gabby's six hundred. Going for it. Going for it. You'll give me six hundred for the pie. Oh my god. <laughs> Nick, you wanna see a magic trick? Oh, Dad! For the fucking life of me. I can't figure out how to raise a plant. Can't raise a fucking plant. Got my grandma like when you having a baby. I got people like you gotta get a dog for the brand. I can't even raise a fucking plant for two weeks without it dying. What do you think I'm gonna do with an actual life, with an actual being? The heartbeat's done in three weeks. I bought this giant fig plant and this shit was expensive. It's big, it's tall, it's like as tall as me, so six foot four if you put it on Tinder. It's already done. Like all the leaves are falling off. It was in the corner of the room because it made the room like so much better, friendlier, it like brought it together. It's like an empty space now, but it looked great when that was flourishing and I just bought it and put it over there. The problem was I think it probably needs sunlight. So I'm trying to nurse it back to health. Every time I buy a plant, I like buy it for my room. And then before you know it, it just ends up here because it starts to die and then I'm like, I just gotta leave it by the windows. And then they come bike to life. So like, what's the point of having the plants though if you can't put them where you want to? This whole plant industry is fucked. You wanna talk about big pharma, man? Big plant is just as bad, if not worse. Fuck big plant industry. Who runs big plant? Who is the Pfizer of big plant? Tell me that. That Reese's pie yesterday, honestly, pretty fucking funky. Kinda wish I sold it. Kinda wish I flipped it, made a profit. Can't go broke taking a profit, all right? Words to live by that I never do. You know what it was? They, something was tweaked in the in the peanut butter. They use, they for sure use like natural peanut butter. You know how like normal Reese's, you can just taste like, oh, this is like artificial, but like still good as shit. This was, you know, if you've ever had, if you've ever gone to like Whole Foods and ground your own peanut butter where it like comes out of the machine and it's way more like, it's got this consistency to it that's way different than like peanut butter, Skippy peanut butter, if you buy like the creamy version or even the chunky version, it's different. That's what they put in the Reese's in the giant Reese's pie, but it also tasted like funkier than that. It's almost like they took natural peanut butter and then put Splenda in it, you know, which is usually right up my fucking alley, but this, I don't know, something about it tasted weird. I mean, I still ate like 600 calories worth of it for sure, for sure, because you're not gonna like buy that and then not do that. If I end up buying one next year, it'll be for the revenue. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving though. I hope, um, Hope you got to spend time with your family, your friends, your enemies, all that good shit.